Welcome back to the Loss Prevention News Network. I'm Joe LaRocca. We're filming today in New York City, just a couple blocks away from the National Retail Federation's big show. And we're thrilled about the speakers, retailers, and service providers that we have doing sessions with Gus and also doing quick takes. But I want to get a little nostalgic for a minute. Uh oh. When I was a, a rookie yeah, shoplift detective working mm -hmm. in a department store, one day I was given this tape. And it was from a company called Wicklander Zalowski. I didn't really know who they were, but these voices that I was listening to in my cassette player, so now you know about how old I am, these voices in my cassette player just played over and over and over again until I did my first interview on a girl named Stacy. I, I won't give her last name <laughs> because I remember it like it was yesterday. The training that WZ has provided over the years is invaluable to the loss prevention, law enforcement, and other private sectors around the country. So I'm thrilled Amber's gonna introduce our next guest from WZ. Dave Thompson, Vice President of Operations from WZ. Welcome, you are a newbie to Thank the you. hot table. You he doesn't even seat. know what a cassette player is. Yes, <laughs> I, that's true. I'm, I'm just hoping those voices coming from the cassette player weren't just in Joe's head, yeah. that they were playing from the, from the car. <laughs> Joe's not sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, which we've brought you here today, not only to tell us all about the new things that WZ has going on, because not only have you guys been an industry stable for a long time, you're also innovating, which is pretty awesome, considering uh, kind of the backbone of the industry. When you think about interviewing and interrogation training, you guys have been there. Um, a resume for a long staple. Time. I a mean, staple. when it says on a resume, must have WZ training, you know it's important. Yeah, so much so I went through the basic. It wouldn't be an LPNN broadcast if I don't mention that. I do it every time. She needs to go through it again, <laughs> I think. What's it when? So Joe mentions the cassette. And so it's, I mean, in my office, I've got our old cassettes, we've got the old VHS, we've got CDs, and last year we launched a simulated interview training program where you can actually interview somebody that's got some logic built in the system and you're interviewing the computer. So it's pretty wow, neat to nice. see how far things have come since, yeah. since then. Yeah. You might be right that I might need to go through it again because when I did my little test run on the link, which is its name, right, the suspect got up, walked out, and pretty much hit, hit me in the face. That so. might have been an amber problem, not a, <laughs> not a method problem. Right. <laughs> Look, was it the, wasn't the first time you tried uh, to, no, I didn't think so. See, I, I have this down. I know what I'm doing. We're getting okay? that. That was abusive. We don't teach that, that kind of methodology. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not at, not at your that. company. No, you we don't do that. Company. I saw it on the video tape. Right. <laughs> Cassette. Listen, here's something that's important. I know you we've did. Been, it. No, no. I thought, I, the, I thought everything we've been talking about was important. It is important, but this very much so. Amber thinks this is important. We're talking about when is it okay to refer to yourself in the third person, and we've established during a job interview, not okay. Ding. Okay. But what does it mean from the interrogation experts right here, folks, when your interview suspect is referring to themselves in the third person? They're huh. guilty. Well, <laughs> I, if your interview <laughs> suspect is talking to themselves in the third person, you probably should have consulted with HR first because you might have other issues at play <laughs> with that subject, I would think. I'm going to leave it, I'm gonna leave it at, at that. Thank you I for saying guilty. that. It just reaffirms everything we've talked about today. <laughs> right. Yes, <laughs> because he was interviewing someone and he did, ended, up, ended up not hiring them because they were talking about themselves in third person. But I might have been listening, because this is Musty TV. Yes. And you mentioned their name. Yes, I did. So now, they probably got hired by some. They just went viral yeah. because they, of you. They, so. It was a fake name. Come on. It, I, I, I changed the name for, changed, yeah, to protect sure. the guilty. Yes, sure. of yes. course. So seriously, though, we do want to talk about um, WZ has been bringing a lot to the marketplace that is truly innovative. Uh, and adding to your repertoire of uh, courses and seminars. So you guys have anything new coming out we should talk about? Yeah, a lot, a lot of new stuff, especially the last few years, we've seen that just the traditional LP role has expanded. And we see that at, at NRF, and you see that NRF Protect getting into the IT and the cybersecurity world. So 
we need to be able to interview in that world as well. So our HR and employee relations uh, two-day seminar has been probably the most on-demand program the last few years. I've heard you guys talk a lot about organized retail crime today uh, and a lot of great solution providers and technology to help mitigate those, those losses. But really, people undervalue the power of the interview. So a lot of requests lately to go out and teach how can you interview the shoplifter in a five to ten minute conversation in an office, the back of a patrol car, and expand information just in a, in a conversation. And, and lastly, I'm excited, this year we have a new uh, practical advanced workshop. So we've changed our advanced course to try to really focus on getting people to practice techniques and create methodology versus sitting there in a lecture format and just taking information in. I, we want, if a VP sends somebody to our class, that they're ready to interview somebody when they walk out. And so that, that's what we're doing this year, so I'm excited about that. Yeah, that's pretty neat because also, uh, and that's really where the link fits in too, right? Because after you take the course, you have some practice in the course, you may not be ready. Hopefully you don't think you're ready to go out and start doing some interviewing because really you're sitting down with people and I think the loss prevention industry needs a little reminder, humbly, that when you're sitting down with someone, they may be 18, they may have stolen a couple sub sandwiches, you're sitting down with them to essentially change their life. And in your life, it may just be another interview. In their life, it's actually a critical moment they will remember forever and should be taken seriously. Right, I mean, yeah, you're right. A $5 theft can be life-changing conversation for somebody. So uh, we did a, a survey with a variety of clients recently and saw that there is a lot of inconsistency when somebody goes to the two-day program they leave and then they have supervisors giving them feedback on how to do the correct methodology. And those supervisors haven't been to a program in 10 years or 15 years and so they're passing on bad habits. And even scarier to Amber, what you just mentioned is people are practicing how to conduct an interview in front of a real employee, in front of a real suspect. And you know the danger to that is obviously, obviously we're gonna talk about some of the dangers to that later in the session on making a murderer, but the link helps People practice this methodology in a risk-free environment, get consistent feedback, and like you, they can force the person to walk out of the room, but it's not a real person, so they well, can recover from Well, that's a special those. skill, really, that you have. But that's, that's right. truly why you guys called it the link, right? Because it's linking the class with actual practice without having a human subject be the brunt of your practice, right? Right, yeah, linking knowledge, knowledge to skill. Because it's that you can, people can leave the class and have pass an exam that they they know it all, but can they actually do it? And this is the way to actually exactly. practice doing yeah. it. So. That's that's fantastic. And you you mentioned you're talking to people about doing some some of the groundwork on organized retail crime, and you said earlier it's free. Why not ask a couple of questions while you have the warm body in front of you? Give us a snapshot. What sort of um, what sort of environment do you start with? Is it something in the office? Is it something in the back of a patrol car? And what are you know maybe some of those nuggets you draw out from them? Yeah, I think that's the biggest difference from an employee interview to the ORC interview is by the nature of the interview, it's probably already been confrontational because they've been apprehended and you have to now de-escalate that such situation. But the same rules apply, right? What, what are these people that you're apprehending afraid of? What are their biggest fears or obstacles? And what rationalization forced them to cause to make these decisions? Was it for financial reasons? Were they talked into it? Same concepts can apply that might in an employee theft interview. So being able, I think, to get away from the cops and robbers type mentality when you stop somebody and de-escalate and realize you as the LP officer, them as the, the shoplifter, you're just both filling that role, but you're both people, you're both human. So how can we connect and try to get expand upon the information in that five minute conversation? Right. So we're almost running out of time, but we will not let you get away without uh -oh. doing the lightning round. We have to do it. So here's how it works. You just give us your answer of the two choices that I provide. You have to beat the timer right there before it buzzes down to zero. Okay. Or you're going to fall through the trap door right onto the streets of New These York These are choice City. questions here. Yes. Choice questions. Yes, this okay. or that. Okay, you ready? We'll have to wait for the clock, and then we're just going to wind down and go. Football or baseball? Baseball. Ellen or Oprah? Ellen. Early bird or night owl? Night owl. Coke or Pepsi? Pepsi. Wine or beer? Wine. Snapchat or Instagram? Neither. Typewriter or computer? Typewriter. Yes. Wow. No, I got one. <laughs> NYC or LA? NYC. Sherlock or Holmes? Wait, damn it. Sherlock, <laughs> Sherlock or Watson. Watson. That's what she meant to say. Sherlock. I knew it. Sherlock or Watson? Sherlock. Did you already say? Oh, sorry. We did. FBI or CIA? FBI. Guilty or innocent? <sighs> Guilty until proven. Opposite. 
Opposite. Yeah. <laughs> Angelina Jolie or Jennifer Aniston? Jennifer Aniston. Friends or Seinfeld? Seinfeld. Brett Ward or Chris Norris? <sighs> Can I do a mic drop on this? <laughs> no. <laughs> we need to cut it. Time, ex- time one expired. Of the best yeah. Time has expired. I'm letting you off the hook with that one. But we really appreciate it. Thank you for stepping into the hot table here. We hope to have you back and look forward to your Making a Murderer session. We're going to send it back to Gus. Thanks for watching LPNN.